If, on a certain evening about 66 million years ago, you had stood somewhere in North America and looked up at the sky, you would have soon made out what appeared to be a star. If you watched for an hour or two, the star would have seemed to grow in brightness, although it barely moved. That's because it was not a star but an asteroid, and it was headed directly for Earth at about 45,000 miles an hour. 60 hours later, the asteroid hit. The air in front was compressed and violently heated, and it blasted a hole through the atmosphere, generating a supersonic shock wave. The asteroid struck a shallow sea where the Yucatan Peninsula is today. In that moment, the Cretaceous period ended and the Paleogene period began. A few years ago, scientists at Los Alamos National Laboratory used what was then one of the world's most powerful computers, the so-called Q-Machine, to model the effects of the impact. The result was a slow motion, second-by-second -second false color video of the event. Within two minutes of slamming into Earth, the asteroid, which was at least six miles wide, had gouged a crater about 18 miles deep and lofted 25 trillion metric tons of debris into the atmosphere. Picture the splash of a pebble falling into pond water, but on a planetary scale. When Earth's crust rebounded, a peak higher than Mount Everest briefly rose up. The energy released was more than that of a billion Hiroshima bombs, but the blast looked nothing like a nuclear explosion, with its signature mushroom cloud. Instead, the initial blowout formed a gigantic jet of molten material, which exited the atmosphere, some of it fanning out over North America. Much of the material was several times hotter than the surface of the sun, and it set fire to everything within a thousand miles. In addition, an inverted cone of liquefied, superheated rock rose, spread outward as countless red-hot blobs of glass, called tectites, and blanketed the Western Hemisphere. The earliest known dinosaurs appeared during the Triassic period approximately 250 to 200 million ago. Dinosaurs evolved into a very diverse group of animals with a vast array of physical features, including modern birds. During the Mesozoic era a species of non-avian dinosaur evolved into a species of avian dinosaur. This avian dinosaur is the first bird and the forerunner of all birds. Every non-avian dinosaur went extinct 66 million years ago. There are several theories as to what may have contributed to the mass extinction of non-avian dinosaurs and other species at the end of the Cretaceous period. It is certain that a massive asteroid or comet struck Earth during this time, causing a dramatic shift in Earth's climate. Some scientists speculate that this impact had catastrophic consequences for life on Earth, but other factors, including changing sea levels and large-scale volcanic activity, may also have played a significant role in this mass extinction. Most theropod dinosaurs had teeth that were pointed, slightly curved backwards, and serrated. The sharp points pierced the meat, and the serrations helped slice it by catching and tearing muscle fibers. Plant-eating dinosaurs had teeth of various shapes designed for their particular diets. The teeth were used to chop off vegetation. If you just dropped a rock in a puddle, there's that initial splash, that's the rim wave, Range said. These rim waves could have reached an inconceivable height of one mile, and that's before the tsunami really gets going, the paper estimates. After the first 10 minutes post-impact, all of the airborne debris associated with the asteroid stopped falling into the gulf and displacing water. The asteroid impact that wiped out most dinosaurs may have taken place during the Northern Hemisphere's spring or early summer. The rocks that the asteroid struck were rich in sulfur, which was ejected and vaporized, mixing with water vapor and creating what Gullick calls a sulfate aerosol haze. Geologists had detected and studied this effect before, but the new research reinforces the role this atmospheric disruption played in the extinction that followed. Our results support this scenario where first you burned parts of the continents, and then you had global dimming of the sun and plummeting temperatures for years to follow, Gallic says. These events account for the loss of 75% of known species at the end of the Cretaceous. Had the impact occurred elsewhere, or in a place of deeper ocean water, the extinction may have happened differently, or not at all. Cores from Chicxulub Crater revealed the planet-wide devastation that the large impactor caused. But the timing of these events will likely spur debate and discussion, Witt says. The complication with relating individual deposits in the core to specific types of events is that clearly the crater wasn't a static environment after formation, Witt says, meaning that earthquakes, waves and other events have altered the rock record over the course of 66 million years. The soot would have started wreaking havoc almost immediately after the asteroid crashed into land, shooting high into the atmosphere. The layer of soot would have blocked about 85% of sunlight from reaching Earth and cut rainfall by nearly 80%, creating near drought conditions. And because the sunlight decreased so drastically, temperatures would have plunged by up to 60 degrees Fahrenheit.
This is before and after the meteorite collision and the life of dinosaurs until the next video, bye bye.